All right, new record. Come on. Let's learn how to do this the right way. Hey everyone, Camber here helping you stay fit for life and today we're going over the bench press. And you might be thinking, the bench press? Everyone knows how to do that. But you'd be surprised how many people get it wrong, including myself until about a few years ago, until I learned to do it right and it's made a huge difference. So some of the things we're gonna go over is hand position, body position on the bench, your bar path, and then also your breathing and control to make sure we do it right, stay safe, and get the maximum amount of gains. So when it comes to the bench press, the main thing you're working is your chest, and you're also working your shoulders and your triceps. But we're gonna look at how to do it to make sure we focus mostly on the chest and we're not working something else. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at is your hand width. So the closer you go, the more you're gonna be working your triceps, and as you go wider, it's more your chest. So pretty much anything shoulder width or a little wider is pretty good. It really just depends on what feels comfortable for you. I've had some shoulder issues in the past and going a little bit wider helps me uh, stick, keep from having any pain. Before I lay down to show you my body positioning, I wanna show you sitting up so you can see the difference, but you wanna make sure you have your shoulders back in this. And the reason is when I first started doing this, probably for 10 years, I would hold the bar and go like this. And you can see my back's kind of rounded here. And when you look at my chest, you can see it doesn't look like a lot of it's being used, whereas my shoulders are really being used more. That's probably a lot of the reason why I had shoulder issues. So one thing you wanna look at is, watch my shoulder blades. You wanna think about pinching your shoulder blades together like that and keeping them together the whole time you're moving. And what happens is when you do that, you can watch how the chest changes. Pinch the shoulder blades together, and now there's a lot more chest activation when you do that, and it protects your shoulders a lot more because you're not using your front delts to push the weight forward as much. You got your shoulder blades pinched together back there. It feels weird at first, but once you get used to it, it makes a huge difference. And I haven't had any pain really at all over the last couple of years while bench pressing. So now let's lay down to see how this will look. So, as we're putting our hands on here, as you can see, depends on the kind of bar you're using, but here, got the knurling here. I usually, you can put your hands in normal position anywhere from here to the outside of it. Once you go outside of these areas, the smooth part, that's more of a wide grip. I usually favor more towards the outside with my pinkies. But like we were saying before, if you have it like this, your arms are gonna be really close and you're doing a lot more of your triceps when you're doing the bench like that. So the next thing we wanna think about is how we have our back position. Now, you can have your back flat if you want, but just remember to keep the shoulder blades pinched together while you're doing this. You'll see a lot of people with their, arc, their back arched a lot like this. You can do that and it'll make you be able to lift more, but the more you arch your back, you're basically turning it more and more into a decline bench. So I arch my back a little bit, but nothing crazy. And actually my bench has this little dip right here that I put my butt into, so I kind of just contour to the bench. But the big thing is pinch those shoulder blades together, put them down and hold them there so when you're moving, you can keep that chest activation like we were talking about. So when it comes to bar path, is bring your arms down at a 45 degree angle like this, just about to your chest where your nipples are and then you push back up so you have a little bit of an arcing motion. From here it's almost straight over your head. You bring it down towards the bottom of your chest and then push back up that way. And when the bar is coming down, you breathe in, pause, and push back out faster. Slow and controlled on the way down, you pause, push back up. And it's that steady tempo that's gonna keep you safe and make sure you're not doing too much weight because if you're having to bring it down and bounce it off your chest, then you're probably doing too much weight. So I'm gonna show you the improper way I used to do it. I'd have the bar like this and I'd bring it out. See how my arms are almost all the way sideways and then push it up and you can see how much my shoulders are forward like we were talking about before. Okay, but now I'm gonna put my shoulder blades together like we were talking about. 
I'm gonna bring it down, not straight down like I did before, but more a curved path down towards the bottom of my chest, and then back up. And you can see, instead of my arms being out here, perpendicular to my body, now they're at about a 45 degree angle as they curve down that natural path. It stretches the shoulders a little bit, but there's no pain there. And you push it right back up in that curved path over your face. This is why I don't like using Smith machines because they make you stick in one plane and you, it's a lot harder on your shoulders. Whereas you have the bar, you learn to do it right. You do that nice curved path to your chest and right back up. And the tempo for that is just like what I'm doing. Slower down, you know, maybe two seconds down, then one second up. Two seconds down, you can pause at the bottom if you want, and right back up. You can come all the way down to your chest and touch it there if you want. But you don't have to. A lot of times, I only come to about 90 degrees here. You think about just a fist in between your chest and that. Because I have had shoulder issues, it's a lot easier on my shoulders to just go there and back up. Because once you get to 90 degrees, that's pretty much all you're really using your chest for. Once you get past that, you see the shoulders stretch even further and I'm having to use my shoulders to get it back to that point and then more of the chest to get it back up. But if you can go all the way to your chest and you don't have any pain or any issues, then that's fine too. So we'll do a few reps with this just to show that work. And that is the bench press. And the big thing you want to remember is to not be ego lifting. If you're starting out especially, don't put any weight on the bar. Just practice with the bar until you can get all that correctly with hand placement, the bar path movement, your breathing controlled with good form. Because if you start ego lifting, chances are you're just gonna get hurt. And what's ego lifting? That means trying to lift more than you can. You start getting to where it's hard and you're going like this, twisting, trying to get the bar up and you're just gonna get yourself hurt. Because in all reality, no one else at the gym cares what you're doing, okay? They all care about themselves. If you can say, hey, I can bench 300 pounds, they might say, cool, but then that's it, it's over. No one really cares. They're not gonna look at you bench pressing lightweight and think, oh, look how weak that guy is. Chances are they'll think more like, oh, I remember when I was lifting that much, and oh, he's using good form. But if they see you over there doing that, oh, I'm trying to get this up, too much weight than you can handle, they're gonna think, wow, that guy needs to take some weight off the bar. It looks really bad, he's gonna get hurt. So just forget all about what other people are thinking. Do what you can do, what you know you can do. Start with light weight and only move up when you can control that weight the entire time. Because using lighter weight with good form and control will get you gains a lot faster than using too much weight than you can handle with bad form because you're much more likely to get injured. Then you're not gonna be able to lift for a week or two or maybe even more depending on what happens to you. So just remember, stay controlled, stay with the amount of weight that you can handle and slowly increase that weight as you can continually control all those movements. So hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, let me know down below. Also post any questions you have and I'll try to clarify anything I can. Leave this video a like and I will see you in the next video.